First of all, we are very happy of these trials. Since uh, it was and it is the first phase three trial dedicated to patients with this disease, and this disease until now has been considered appropriately as an orphan disease. Uh, we designed the trial targeting the therapy to either <clears throat> the mutated form and the non-mutated form, the wild type. So uh, we enrolled patients with both uh, ATTR-M and ATTR wild type. We randomized 441 patients to tefamidis 80 milligram or tefamidis 20 milligram or placebo in a two to one to two ratio and stratified our population according to etiology, so wild type versus mutant, and severity of the disease, so according to the New York class, functional class. The results are, have been absolutely gratifying. Uh, we obtain a 30% reduction of mortality and a 30 to 40% reduction of the uh, hospitalization due to cardiovascular problem. The ATTRACT trial was a very interesting study because they actually were looking at a potential treatment for amyloid heart disease and I think you know really one it's relatively rare disease but we've never really had any good treatment when we see it clinically we basically treat them symptomatically meaning most often they go into heart failure and they either die of heart failure or they die of sudden cardiac death. We've really never had a drug that we knew would target this disease. So the ATTRACT study was very interesting uh, for amyloid, pretty large study. Everybody in the study had to get a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis, and the genetic workup was done as well to determine who had the autosomal dominant version versus the people who had the wild type version. And what the study found is that this, this novel drug uh, was able to target what we see biologically, at least that's the presumption that this drug is preventing amyloid fibrils or the sort of messy matrix that we see being deposited into the heart muscle. The take home message is really important. We have no treatments for patients with uh, primary cardiac <coughs> amyloid or TTR amyloid. Um, and this uh, drug, Tefamidus, uh, appears to cut down the rate of cardiovascular death and heart failure hospitalizations and slow the decline that these patients have in functional capacity, which here was measured as six minute walk, and measures of quality of life. So there's really never been a treatment for this before. It usually comes to light because of um, heart failure symptoms, left ventricular hypertrophy, low voltage on an ECG. There are usually some clues that tell clinicians this person might have amyloid involvement and then you'd move down a diagnostic pathway. But once you have the diagnosis, the management is very generic. There's nothing specific about treating the amyloid deposition itself. It's diuretics to lower filling pressures, you know, et cetera, it's, it, or maybe heart transplant. Um, but it's been very problematic. There's been no direct treatments. I think it's really about, uh, it's, it's conceivable genetic testing might, might be used in populations we know to be at some risk for this, like African Americans in, in the US. Uh, however, I think more important broadly is suspicion, clinical suspicion. I think many of us think that am cardiac amyloid is very underdiagnosed, and some studies have shown, for instance, that in people we generally refer to as heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, 10 to 15 percent of those may actually have cardiac amyloid, but people have not thought about it. So it's really suspected, think about it now that there's a treatment, and there are imaging tests, pyrophosphate imaging in the United States, DPD imaging in, in Europe and, and elsewhere, that can show you TTR amyloid with pretty, non-invasively with pretty high um, performance. So it's really a high index of suspicion. It's a very important study, there's never been a treatment, and now that there's a treatment, physicians should think about this in patients who present with heart failure and preserved EF, always think about it.